here's how science, I think, is going to come to terms with the fact that there's something so much more than we've ever been led to believe, and it's through their attempts to clone life. We've all heard of Dolly, the, the sheep in, uh, in the UK that was cloned. Uh, the first successful cloning, and for most people, the story stops there. What they don't know is that Dolly, the sheep, at first looked normal and at first looked like any other sheep. She actually conceived and had six offspring, but prematurely her body began to break down and she died at about 50% of the lifespan of her species. And they thought, well, maybe this is a one-off, maybe it's a fluke. They've done a lot of experiments, other sheep, and now they're, they're doing this bovine um, uh, cows as well. Same thing is happening their bodies prematurely break down and they succumb to really strange diseases that are not typical, uh, either for that species or, or for that age in, in the species. And they can't figure out why. And they're saying, okay, we took a cell. And now here's another identical cell. Why wouldn't they live the identical life? It's not the identical cell. And this is, this is where I think science is going to have to come to terms with this. So, at the risk of too much detail, let me just go into a little bit of detail about how a clone actually works. It's fascinating. Because what the, they'll do is they'll, they'll take the egg from one sheep, for example, and they will remove the DNA and the nucleus and put in the DNA of, of another, uh, another sheep into that nucleus and allow it to grow. Here's what they don't tell you. Not all the DNA is in the nucleus. Some of the DNA is outside of the nucleus. And there is a communication that happens between the DNA, an energetic communication that, that is established. When they, the term is enucleation, when they take the, the DNA out of that nucleus, put in another form of, of DNA into that nucleus, they left the DNA outside of the nucleus. Now, those two realms of DNA are no longer in communication. They can't, and the, the role that the external nucleus is playing to that internal nucleus of, of, of information sharing uh, as a template for longevity, that communication now is lost. So that is at least part of the reason why the, the premature breakdown is happening. This leads into a realm that the scientific community is, doesn't want to go there, is that there's more than a chemical conversation going on. It's an energetic conversation. And it's that energetic conversation that gives us our humanness because our DNA is the antenna. It's a vibratory antenna in communication with a part of us that is ageless, that is timeless. Uh, it's the part of us that does all the things that, that we've been talking about that allows us to have what some people consider God-like skills, God-like abilities, because they are the kinds of abilities that we've always attributed to our, our you know, super people, you know, Wonder Woman and, and Superman and things like that. These are the ability to, to heal on demand, uh, to create resilience on demand, to uh, longevity enzymes, or, or what some people call anti-aging enzymes on demand. Uh, over 1,300 positive biochemical reactions, we have the ability to self-regulate on demand in a way no other form of life can do. That's part of our divinity. We begin to lose that when we give our humanness away to the technology, uh, to the AI, to the computer chips, chemicals in our blood, gene therapies to enhance immune response. We're just on this this edge, we know enough how to implement it, we do not know and have not taken the responsibility to explore ultimately what the implications are. And, uh, and we're going to have to come to terms with that as a society and as a civilization. And it's, it's going to happen in this generation. It cannot last, you know, another five generations. It's, it's right now. This is up for us. And I'm very passionate about this because I believe that we're worth preserving. There is something, and we can get into this deeper, there is something so precious and sacred 
about our humanness that has never been given to any other form of life that we know of today. Now, I, there are many forms of life, I'm sure, throughout the cosmos, and maybe it happens somewhere else. But to the best of my knowledge, we're it, and we're all we've got. And if we lose ourselves, if we lose our humanness, we'll never get it back. And the cosmos will never know what it means for us to be fully human on this beautiful planet, this beautiful world we live in.